Hello, good, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Kokila. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, once again to the She Evolves event. Uh, so, talking about uh, She Evolves, uh, this is an initiative from ICE, uh, Empower Youth Educate Society, a trust uh, formed by Mr. Anto Vincent uh, two decades back. And uh, now the legacy is being taken <clears throat> forward by Mr. Arul Dev, his son, and uh, Uma. So uh, she evolves as part of the, <clears throat> the various other initiatives uh, that's part of the ICE Trust. So we have, uh, we, we enable the new creation, anything, uh, any resources, people who uh, want to lead a new life, in a more creative, deeper way. So the different areas where ICE works are on uh, integral education, on Nature Connect, on uh, Nature Care, uh, She Evolves uh, with Women, and uh, Youth Above 60. So this program is part of the She Evolves, and uh, here we bring uh, 12 women who are uh, very normal women, but leading very extraordinarily beautiful lives and touching people in a very special way. So we have today Kokila Sri Vikneshwaran. Uh, she is uh, a very, I would say, a multifaceted, multi-talented personality. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, you know, from her face itself, the humility flows. And uh, she's an engineer turned uh, certi a certified yoga teacher. And uh, she, she's passionate about anything holistic health, um, you name it, uh, about sustainable living. And uh, she, lives, uh, she lives all these things. And uh, I think um, if you ask Kokila, like we had an interaction together with uh, Arul and Uma, and uh, she was talking about how art and yoga are you know, two things that she would never ever leave. And these are two things that would uh, help her in her inner progress. So she is really a great mural uh, artist. Uh, she works on columns, Kerala murals, Tanjo paintings. Uh, I think uh, there are so many of it and I'm sure Kokila would uh, explain to us. And also one thing I remember she saying that you know, uh, it was for her children that, uh, you know, that she decided to go deeper into the understanding of the wisdom, the traditional wisdom. And, uh, you know, so she's a, quite a deep rooted, truly uh, deep rooted in the traditional wisdom. So I present Kokila and we welcome you, Kokila, to share your story. And thank you. Thank you so much. Uh... Priya, like um, I, this introduction, I hope I live up to this introduction in this lifetime of mine. And um, so, uh, like uh, how Priya was saying, uh, I was also uh, leading a normal, uh, you know, the usual rat race kind of life for uh, quite a long time until uh, I got pregnant. And uh, that's why I keep telling everyone, like, uh, whatever I am today, a uh, huge part of it is contributed uh, by my children because they actually held my hands and showed me the way. That's what I keep saying. Um, so from there on, you know, I started ex uh, exploring on what is safe for children. And that uh, led to so many shocking uh, truths about what is hidden in baby food, what is hidden in our food, the things that we use every day, right from the personal care products to everything. And what is the impact of all of that on uh, the planet that we live in, the only planet, which is our home. And all of this uh, led very deeper questions. Um, so, and uh, of course there was, um, and when I was exploring all that, uh, there was a lot of rage, um, you know, anger on myself, anger on what as society, as human beings, we were doing to ourselves and to our future generations and the planet. But uh, that's where I think uh, what, uh, 
Mahakavi Bharati says, you know, Raudram Parag. He says, Raudram Parag in the sense that rage is of no use until I can uh, derive some courage or and uh, make some meaningful action out of it, you know. Otherwise, it's just going to destroy me and destroy others around me. So I didn't, uh, so I just wanted to do something about it. And of course, there are so many uh, leaders who have lived before us, showed us the way. So again, there I draw inspiration from Mahatma Gandhi, where he says, be the change that you want to see in the world, right? So I found there is no meaning in talking and doing things without me actually practicing it. So uh, that's how slowly and steadily my husband and I started taking baby steps towards sustainable living and, uh, you know, uh, exploring what is really uh, good for us and for the planet. And that led us to uh, slowly towards safe food movements. And uh, we had the opportunity to work with really great people in the organic food movement in Tamil Nadu. We were blessed that way and slowly we moved to a farm with our children. And then, of course, parenting has been the biggest thing for me in my life. Like I would say that is the yoga practice for me. Um, like my guru, Desika Chair, always says, uh, I, I am a yoga teacher in the tradition of Sri Krishna Macharya. Uh, so always Sri Macharya Ji and uh, Desika Chair Ji always keep saying that uh, yoga is not what you do on the mat. You guys, what you do after you step out of the mat? What is your relationship with the world? What is your relationship with others? Your relationship with yourself, that is yoga for me. And uh, so, th so that way, my relationship my, with my children is extraordinarily special because they don't manipulate, they don't try to soften things for you. They are, you know, brutally honest. They mirror you out in uh, so very beautifully. So that way, I got to learn about myself and uh, um, like uh, talking about the practices that have always helped me like being a mindful parent was itself a yoga like I said they show you who you are truly so can you see your dark side as well as your beautiful side and romance with your dark side equally and learn the uh, what it is trying to tell you and work on that um, so like as a yoga teacher sometimes I really feel sad of what yoga has been reduced to in the current world uh, to the posture that we do on the mat, uh, how flexible am I on the mat? That is not yoga. Uh, very sadly, that is how the world is looking at yoga these days, but that is not yoga. So even uh, from what Patanjali's Yoga Sutra says, Ashtanga Yoga, there are eight parts to yoga. And asana is only the third one. It's only one by eight of it. And we are all so stuck to it because it's tangible. Uh, we can look at it and all of that. But there are much more subtler layers to yoga. And the first step to yoga, what actually Patanjali talks is yama. And then he talks about niyama. What is my relationship with the world? What is my relationship with myself? Have I worked on that enough? Only then can I even actually come to asana, he says. Then comes asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dhyana, dharana, dhamadi, and all of that. So... Of course, you can make entry into yoga through asana, not an issue, but it's the, my request is we should not always be stuck to just that. There's much more to, you know, to be explored. Uh, it, it gives you the courage to turn inwards and look at yourself as you are and the courage to accept yourself as you are and to love yourself as you are. That is yoga for me because unless I know to love myself, accept myself, I cannot offer that to the outer world. Let it be my family, friends, or even the bigger world. So that is yoga for me, you know, acceptance. And finally, surrender, what uh, Patanjali says is Ishwara Pranidhana. I do everything, but can I surrender the fruits to the higher force and just do my best in whatever I can? It is easier said than done, but yes, anything with practice becomes a little better. And that's where I am. Uh, saying like, uh, I'm just a beginner in all of that, whatever be it, uh, yoga, art, and traditional wisdom, I'm just scratching surface as a probably a pre-kindergarten. Uh, and, uh, and I'm surprised, really surprised, because um, like, if you take sustainable living, you take health, can you take any field today? And whatever problems be, all, I always find people are trying to go back to find the solutions to it from our traditional thing. Like for example, let us take sustainable living. 
we all know how much destruction these uh, plastic bags you know one time disposable bag disposable cutlery you know all this is doing to the world all of us know it uh, maybe we can live in denial and all of that but all of us know it so what is that we're trying to do we're trying to go back to the cloth bags which have been there for years and then when uh, you talk about healthcare uh, now you when we had covid people were talk you know, the west was talking about mindful breathing doing bhujangasana you know uh, prostrate poses that help covid what is it it is only the bhujangasana and pranayama that we have been doing for thousands of years so anything i just feel we just have to go back to the roots you know there is so much wisdom there already existing and we uh, sometimes there is a story where they say there is a beggar who sits on a box and uh, begs all his life you know and not knowing that the box he is sitting on holds abundance of treasure of gold and gemstones so a lot of time i feel we are all that you know we, there is so much here and we keep looking at the west we keep looking at so many other places looking for things but uh, does that mean everything that is said uh, in the olden days i should just blindly follow that i would never say that and never did our uh, ancestors say that either even if you take yoga sutras you he always says there is a agama there is a traditional text for you to show the direction but finally it has to be pratyaksha your own reality you have to practice and see what works for you what is actually your reality that's what our traditional text i let it be ayurveda anything says there are no, there is nothing that works for everyone there is no shirt that fits for everyone they knew it that's how the yoga is also like especially in the tradition where we i come from we always try to tailor make the program for the person it's not like the, i design a practice and i force it on a person we don't believe in that so similarly everything that we practice even if there is an ancient wisdom that is like gold but how do i adapt it to my current context how do i make it work for me that's where the actual uh, you know thing lies success lies that's what i believe in um so so that is about yoga and all of that and as a practice when i see um, i i think arul and umar were also talking telling me that i uh, the, to talk about the inner practices that have helped me to be where i am so uh, to be a mindful parent to take this uh, to travel a path which is less traveled uh, and often questioned upon in a lot of ways you know uh, choices that we made so what really helped me say sane uh, i think yoga in the in the sense uh, when i talk about yoga like i said before it's not just asana but you know working with that mind body breath triangle i think that i can spend lifetimes just working with that triangle uh, it's magic actually because if uh, whatever is in my mind impacts my body and whatever is in my breath impacts my mind and body this this uh, these three are so magically intertwined like uh, just working with them just excites me so much you know to discover uh, for example if um, i have some students who have uh, difficulty in letting go of things they will let it be emotions let it be past hurts when they hold on to it and i see they are constant people su- suffering from chronic constipation so that is the impact of what mind has on body so so similarly like when you see some people have uh, a very really disturbed mind that shows in their body that shows in their breath so this is a beautiful very very beautiful triangle to work on in healing and i really love uh, this holistic healing approach working with the mind and healing because any other thing that i do let it be ayurveda let it be siddha let it be allopathy homeopathy doesn't matter that medicine or whatever it is only to help you calm down your symptoms to a certain little bit and then help you reflect and go back to the root unless the root is addressed i think nothing outside is going to help much so how so going back going to your mind where does this begin whether it's happiness illness everything has a roots in the mind that fascinates me and that's why art and yoga really uh, you know are my favorite one because uh, how much ever we try to uh, heal ourselves with any modality the healing actually happens when i can be in the present when i can really um, observe my thoughts Uh, my uh, whatever i'm going through from a space uh, as a neutral observer it's not easy the first step would be to observe my thoughts okay so much nonsense is going on in my head can i see that and then 
the next step as you practice is just can I see that without judgment? Because immediately the mind will start judging and giving you instances, connections from the past, worries about future and all of that. So to get out of all this and to stay out of for that and see, observe it from a neutral observer space, that is healing for me. That's the beginning of healing. If I can do that, I can really, really uh, see where my illness is coming from. I will be able to, you know, separate out voices in my head, which are my own voices, which are the voices that I have got it, you know, held it as a child. So many things. It takes you to layers and layers of healing and, you know, discovering yourself. Because what we are today is not just because of what, us. We have our parents' voices inside our head, our aunts and uncles, what they have told us, the belief that we as children formed. And then in the, as adults, we have formed up so many things that impacts us to see what, like if I hold something here, you might see something else. I might see something else in it. I might have a rose in my hand and I think that's the most beautiful rose in my hand. And somebody else will think what an ugly color it has. It's the same rose, yeah? So the perspective varies. How does it vary? Because of the lenses through which we see it. And those lenses are built up over years. So my the constant practice in yoga is to clean, clean this lens as much as I can so that I can see the reality as close as I can. So it is a constant practice. It's not like one day I've cleaned and done. No, it's like just our, like our houses that we keep cleaning every day. So that is yoga for me. And for that, I have to be in the moment so that I'm not entangled with my past and future so much. And that is not easy at all. It's all said and done. So it is a constant practice. So a lot of times people think if I sit for med meditation is a very you know, controversial word today. Um, it's not uh, what we do in the guided meditations and that that is not the meditation, the dhyana that Patanjali talks about. But like, I'm not getting into all of that. The, whatever we are trying to do, to sit close our eyes and bring our asses together, that itself uh, is, can be more fruitful if I'm able to stay in the moment throughout the day. It's not like, you know, you know sitting uh, for 20 minutes, I, I won't completely focus. That's not going to happen. If I'm throughout the day, I'm having distractions all throughout. I can't focus for five minutes. I have to look at my phone every time there's a beep or a vibration. We are all so distracted today, right? So if you practice distraction for throughout the day and for 20 minutes, I want to be fully focused, that's not going to happen. So that is yoga. Throughout the day, can I make have small practices? Can I come back to my breath? The breath is the magic. In a, if you come to Krishna Machar yoga tradition, you will hear every, every single teacher talk about breath more than the posture. For us, breath is the sacred thing. So, and I, I totally vouch for it because breath, if you, if you are you're in the midst of a huge problem, there is no point running with like a headless chicken. It, it's not going to bring any by a good solution. Definitely, all of us know that. So what can I do? Can I sit for five minutes, gather myself, come back to my breath? Of course, it is not going to solve the problem and make it all easy, but it will help me center myself and help me see something clearly help me find a solution which can help me cross this situation so that is the power of breath and the breath can actually bring you to the current moment the only thing that can bring you to the current moment is the breath can i come back to my breath every time every probably an hour or so if i can just take a minute to come back to my breath can i do that such small practices are what really help me stay sane throughout the day that's what i would say and uh, for me art naturally does this to me when I draw or uh, paint or do whatever, I just go into it. Uh, I, that there is no time, space, references until, you know, uh, my children and my environment remind me of that. I can really get into it. So that is where I think it heals because it takes you uh, away from your uh, guilt and shame related to your past, your fear and anxiety related to your future. The healing and happiness is only in the present and the art for me and yoga for me brings me to that. So that's why I keep uh, saying uh, that is my thing which helps me heal because that helps me be in the moment and uh, uh, that helps me be a better parent, be a better whatever I, role I'm trying to play because unless we're present for that person, let it be a student I'm listening to, let it be my son, let it be my husband, when I'm there 100% completely, then it's a different thing. You will see the energy there in the context different. And when I'm not listening, you will automatically feel the tension. The other side 
will immediately feel it. They're not here, present here. They're not listening to me and they will get frustrated. And the whole context shifts to another energy, you know? So like Nikola Tesla say, everything is energy. So it is about how can I manage these energies in the most harmonious way possible. Um, I'm also a Reiki practitioner. So in that way, Reiki helps me work with these energies, these thoughts. How many thoughts do I have that are uh, constructive and how many thoughts are there that are pulling me down? Uh, all of these practices have definitely helped me see that I am responsible for whatever is happening in my life. There is uh, no more blame game of pointing fingers outside. That conserves a lot of energy for me and everybody around me. So that is it. Like, you know, uh, of course, there are certain things beyond our control, but a lot of things in our lives are controlled by our thoughts. So can I have work on my thoughts? Can I stay in the moment? Can I observe my thoughts and myself and what's happening to me from a neutral observer space? That is yoga for me right now. I think, yeah. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Kokila. So Kokila, you, you would like to show one of your painting, like you mentioned that you can. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Uh, can you give me share screen? And I think Arun is with a question saying Arun you know, also has a question along yeah. with that maybe you can answer that too. How do you experientially do your art? How do you experientially do it? So maybe you can explain with your uh -huh. So are you able to see my screen? Hello? No, not not yet. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, you can try. Can, can you see the, the no, painting? No. Not yet. Uh, can you see? No, I am not able to see. I can see you. If you. that is what you refer as the okay. painting, then okay. And now it is coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you now, see? <laughs> now we okay. can. Yeah. Yeah. It okay. Is. So this is my first Tanju painting. So I had, I just had a couple of them here to show everyone. Wonderful. So, uh, yeah, so how I... uh, Kokila, can you zoom it a bit or something? Sure, sure. I'll try my best. Can you see it better now? Yeah. Uh, screen also. Pardon, Naru? Is it there in full screen, Kokila? No, uh, it's a PDF, so I'm not able to make it. Okay. Either. Yeah. But people can put in their window as well. There'll be a present or something on the right side. If you if you see, there is no. No, I don't have the option. I'm trying, but uh, this is the maximum I could. And go ahead, okay. Now. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Fine, fine. Yeah. yeah. So, how do I experientially paint? It's a good question. So, I don't generally pick up any uh, anything to buy. I like uh, I juggle too many things. So, I find. Um, not so much time as I would like to do my art. So when I do my art, I'm very specific about what I want to paint. Unless and until I'm really called for painting something, I don't take up the subject. And when I do it, um, it is like a meditation for me. I, I sit, connect with that energy. And then as I sketch, uh, that it, it feels like there is an energy transfer between that, uh, like say this Lakshmi and me. And there is a constant conversation, kind of energy conversation, conservation going on between us. And um, in Tanyu painting, there is something called, uh, like how in Shilpa Shastra, in sculptures, we don't uh, open the eyes until the end. That is the uh, rule given in the Shilpa Shastra. So even in Tanyu painting, we try to follow the same. So everything will be completed and the eyes are the ones which we draw at the end. And uh, I have always felt like the more I'm, focus, the more I've meditated, the more I've connected, uh, then the eye opening is like a breeze and there is some energy which really takes over when I paint and that is even more intense when I do the eyes and when I open the eyes like it is a super uh, experience, I can't explain it in words, I usually tear up crying and uh, there is a, it's a huge thing and uh, it feels like that 
that image really comes to life uh, for me. So, and uh, that, that is how I experience each painting. Uh, so that is, uh, I don't know if it answers your question, Narul, sir, so. Um, yeah, uh, you can take us to some of these, you know, because the, you know, I've uh, conversed with you and I've learned so much from that. Uh, if you can just take through each painting and just share with us, because some of us here are artists also, and everybody can draw also, uh, something that can give us a glimpse of your natural gifts that you have. So whatever couple of paintings you want, you can just take through and uh, guide us through uh, how we can, you know, learn in our own way. Uh, I, I I don't think I'm that, that great an artist, but anyway. So, <clears throat> so this was Lakshmi and... Uh, uh, this is uh, Meenakshi, which I did. Uh, I, I have a deep connection with her because I, my parents and, and we are hail from, we all come from Madurai. So we have a very special connection with her. So um, how do I say? Uh, you just uh, have to, uh, for me, it's not like how to draw, it's how to connect basically. So when I start with the painting, I know this is what I want to paint. And there is, then uh, I just, uh, completely surrender to that uh, divine force which I'm trying to draw. I just say, you, I'm doing my best. You flow through me and take care of whatever has to come out. Uh, that is the thing I always say, uh, do it. And I always set an intention like this painting should uh, you know, bring joy and healing to everyone who gets to see it. Uh, so with that intention, when I start doing things, or I feel like it just flows and there is a sense of acceptance and surrender, you know, not expecting great, uh, this is how it should look or that is how it should look and just go with going with the flow. That's what I do with most of my paintings. <clears throat> and uh, I think, yeah, uh, uh, like uh, how, uh, when we get into, you know, the technicalities of how to draw, will it look good? Will it, will a lot of people like it and all that? I just try to, I've tried to stop doing that these days. Uh, does this give me happiness? That's the end of it. Because I find the perceptions, like I was talking about, there can be 100 perceptions and each perception, if I start giving it an importance, then I really go crazy. So instead, I just uh, see if it makes me happy uh, and I just go with it. So this was Saraswati, which I did. Uh, and then this was a, a very extremely powerful and meditative uh, experience for me drawing Akhilandeshwari. So yeah, this actually transform. What happens when uh, when I do this in this way is I connect to that energy. And each of these forms definitely has uh, a different kind of impact on me. Like when I did this Akhilandeshwari, I could see a lot of transformation in me in the sense. Uh, I could, I'm not saying that I'm completely fearless or anything, but I've definitely been able to, you uh, know, come to terms with a lot of fear and take them away and uh, be at a much more calmer and uh, uh, secure place inside. That kind of a transformation happens when you, when I really connect to the painting and do the painting. So, and then when I came to know about it, uh, when I read more about her, I came to know that she's the goddess of, who helps on overcome fear. I didn't know that when I painted her, but that is what she did to me. I felt much more secure and less fear fearful. And it was very interesting when I came to know that that's what this energy form does. So, and then this is another Saraswati that I did for a friend. And then when I drew Akhilandeshwari, like Akhilandeshwari's earrings are Sri Chakrams. So Sri Chakrams are uh, Yantrams or how do I say they are geometrical constructions, which uh, which are not simple geometrical constructions, but they are very powerful. And uh, she wears Sri Chakrams for her earrings, and that's how I started drawing Sri Chakrams. And I got into drawing. Uh, you know, it became like a passion for me. And uh, then one of my friends wanted me to do uh, Sri Chakram in Tanjur painting, and I did this for them. So. And this was my recent painting where I wanted to explore a different medium, I, uh, watercolor and uh, pens. And that's how I drew this Ganesha. 
so I like to explore me, um, different mediums and uh, things like this is uh, something which I drew for uh, during this Marguerite, it's a column. And uh, like I was saying, um, sustainable living and all of that. So I try to incorporate that as much as into my art also. Like if you see, uh, I really want to do natural colors and all that, but yet I haven't found a feasible solution where people would be interested in buying a natural color painting because it's something they work out to be too expensive. So sometimes we end up working with regular commercial product, but when it comes to columns, I really make sure I don't use any of those commercial uh, colors and all of that, because I know I, when I wash that column, it goes to my plants. I see the animals and birds in my farms, which are going to be affected by it. So I, so like how I don't use chemicals in the house uh, to, for myself or my children or for my, to clean the house. Uh, similarly, even in my columns, I don't use any, uh, commercial colors. These are all natural colors, mud, turmeric, ash, and all of that. So that's something. And these are some of my columns, which I find it extremely meditative when I do it every year during Marguerite in an extensive way. So these are simple ways. Like I, uh, I try to take inspiration, like I said, from the flowers in my garden and trees in my garden, you know, they, they, they just add beauty to wherever they are in whatever way they can. And uh, I try to do that in my own limits in, in whatever way I can. So, so that's. Really, really beautiful. Thank you. Anyone in the audience, you have any questions, you can unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat window. Any questions for Kokila? I am wondering, is it okay to ask Kokila? Yes, ma'am. When you drew them, is it my Anman, the way I see it is the way you've described, from the way you've described, you become that. Was that the experience? It's not like it is not like you are drawing that. It is like you are that. Uh, yeah, at, at times, it very like fleeting times, I do feel that energy that way. Uh, but, um, I'm, but sometimes I feel I'm just an instrument, like you know how the Venu is in hands of Krishna and he blows through it and the music comes out. I feel like that flute. The energy flows through me to create something beautiful. That has been the most dominant experience and sometimes I do feel that this energy is there in me and that's why it's expressing that way in me. so it's been both ways yeah thank you thank you very beautiful work very very beautiful and serene it is thank you thank you may, may you have a lot of opportunities to express that way thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you Kokila uh, so we have a question from uh, Ramesh Kumar what does sustainable living mean to you, Kokila? Uh, sustainable living uh, to me, uh, if I, uh, in a very practical way, it means like uh, to live uh, as much as possible according to the laws of nature. Like if I look around at the birds and animals that are there in my farm, none of them, uh, you know, they go to bed at sunset, they wake up at sunrise, they don't harm any other creature in any other way. You know, uh, they don't, even if they're, they're only if they're hungry, they go to hunt another being which they is their prey. Otherwise they don't. So these are the things which are inspire me. So how much am I doing that way? If, if I have to talk in terms of yoga, that is what is called as yama, you know, how, how non-violent is my approach to life? How truthful am I? Non-stealing, how much am I holding for myself? You know, animals don't hold. They just take what they need and they leave it for the rest. But we don't have it in us, right? We have to hold, we have to save for our future. And then uh, in the name of saving for the future, the, about the future, which we really don't know, uh, we are the ones we constantly are caught between the past and future doing all these things. But I see them living in the moment happy. Do I have food now happy? Can I go? But 
we have electricity so we stick till one and two and do things which are not good for us so now what is the healthcare industry saying can we go back to the circadian rhythm can we sleep at sunset can we rise at sunrise that seems to heal a lot of health issues and people in america are going to the forest camping there for a week without any electricity or electronic devices to set their natural body clock to uh, you know proper rhythm and all that so that is sustainable living for me how much of my life is in tune with the nature's way of living so that i leave minimal footprint like the cat that lives in my farm can do naturally can i do that of course it takes a lot of effort so that is what i am trying to do i'm 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 like i said i'm a pre kindergartner even that i'm not saying i'm 100% sustainable or anything of that sort but i'm definitely striving for that every day trying to do my best in that sense yeah um priya before you open arul's question there was a chat that came to me so kupri uh do sometimes your emotions affect the way you portray a painting so this came from one of them do uh, some yeah um i think uh, not really i haven't uh, seen that way because uh, when i am in uh, if you are meaning about uh, emotional turbulence if it's a happiness or something of that sort probably yes but when i'm not feeling very settled or you know i am not in a very emotionally stable things generally i don't get into painting or uh, doing such stuff then i go back to my breath i calm myself and then i start working on it so generally that's how it works so probably the ha- emotions of peace or uh, happiness is what i usually work with when i do a paint tangible painting or something and that probably reflects in it yes yes especially the eyes <laughs> so arul has a question you dive into ancient and difficult texts like tirumula tirumantiram what kind of inspirations you draw for your practices from them yeah so i'm now i'm like i'm just beginning to read tirumula and i find it so fascinating uh like i i keep telling people there is nothing more to really invent there is everything there in tirumula and tirukural and yoga sutras there is nothing new to actually talk about they have talked about everything and uh, if i have to tell one of my favorite padals from tirumula which is very practical in that sense and gives me uh, you know i read this text not to really become an expert in it because that's not possible what i'm trying to do is to find you know like how a, a footholds for me to progress further uh so that way one of my favorite part is uh, when arul sir you're asking this question what comes up to me there is a part which says yavarkumam iravir por pachillai yavarkumam pasuvir por vayurai yavarkumam unnum bodur kai pidi yavarkumam innur innurai so what it means is uh, bhagavan like that uh, the divine doesn't need you to do big festivals and rituals to celebrate or you know do it so if there if can iravan is uh, the god can you offer him a green leaf with a whole heart just and that will be the greatest offering he would be happy with but if you are not able to do that can you feed a cow or an any animal nearby that is be the biggest offering that you can do even if that is not possible before you eat can you take a handful of food and share with someone else even if that is not possible can you just talk pleasing words to another person which actually elevates their energy or mood so how beautiful and how practical that is all it is you know if i can offer someone truly genuinely kind and pleasant words that has to be inside me for me to offer it and to be that i have to be kind and compassionate to myself it it just summarizes the whole of ashtanga yoga practice for me you know only when it is there within me i can offer it to the world so uh, like how i think tirumula everybody knows anbe shivam that is his most famous and most popular thing so uh, similarly yan petra inbam perugai vayagam so if i can practice these thing i i think my lifetime is meaningful now i don't have to do anything more that's what i feel so, <laughs> so that's how i connect with tirumula practically 
everyday living, what can I learn from him? Thank you, Kamalina. Thank you. Yeah, given the context today, right now, where there is a country which is being torn in war, and we are talking, when you're talking here, I, that's what I feel. All this world right now needs is to shift from the, you know, the love of power to power of love. Uh, that is exactly the switch that's needed. You know, from what you're saying, <laughs> how do we connect it to the sustainable con concept? Are you saying use all these principles of Yavaram, Elarko, Anbarko, no other lame, sustainable? What is it that one needs to do? Because two or three days we hear somebody's talk and then people are aware of it. And then how do you make it sustainable? Meaning it is not enough, like for plastics, for example, we were all okay changing it. And then when pandemic happened, plastic came back in a full force. So uh, is that what you're saying by sustainable saying uh, we need to implement it every day or do we have some tips on that? Yeah, um, like uh, I keep telling all my students also who are, you know, when they come to yoga, right? When they'll come in the initial thing, they'll come with full vigor. You, I'll do one hour practice, you give me one hour practice. Then when they come back for the review, you'll say, um, ma'am, can you make it 15 minutes? I don't find one hour every day. So that's how it happens. You know, the initial josh is there. But I, the same thing I feel uh, for all of us is like until that inspiration to do that thing comes from deep within, it is not sustainable. So how much ever I listen to lectures and, uh, you know, talks and inspiration talks and all that, only when that kindles the spark inside me and I hold that inspiration from within, can I sustain it. So uh, for me, it is like I see every day around me, the animals around me, how they live. And uh, probably that inspires me even more because I see the elephants here are uh, such huge animals, such gentle animals. Uh, I see so many of them die because they have plastics which are choking them in their stomach. It, it really breaks my heart. Uh, so how much of my convenience uh, is okay? So these things constantly, when I connect to the nature, it doesn't mean you have to live in a farm to do that. Even when I was in a city, when I used to see at the, look at my uh, house, there were three outside my house and the crows there, thousands of them. And on Diwali day, what happens to them, how much they suffer and all of that, all of that used to, you know, that's when I decided whatever much I can do, I like, I will do, that's all. So uh, I do practice that. And as I practice, I, uh, when, only when I practice, I can actually talk about it to others. Otherwise, it's, people will easily make out it's, Gopla and just making up things and talking things. So that's what I try to do. So to sustain it, it has to come from within. So how can I really, so every day probably taking a five, 10 minutes to sit with nature, even if it is a beach near your house or looking at a tree and connecting to it, I think that helps us be in tune with nature and uh, our relationship with uh, the outer world becomes more meaningful. Okay, so uh, I think uh, Sharanya, I think uh, she answered your question with uh, Smriti Ma'am's uh, question as well. So if not, uh, we can. Uh, otherwise, Kokila, um, Mr. Ramesh Kumar is asking, where do you live and where the yoga classes are conducted? Uh, I think, I actually, I live in Kerala, sir. But if you're in Chennai, there are a lot of my colleagues who take classes in Chennai. Uh, I right now have uh, really reduced my classes for now because I'm overwhelmed with a lot of things. But if you need classes, you can definitely contact. I can give you my colleagues, other colleagues who will be able to help you out. So we can pass on your number or something? Yeah, yeah sure. So there's another message. Love the mindfulness with which you live, ma'am. Very inspiring and thank you for sharing this. How do we achieve or rather live mindfully this way? Do you think yoga has helped you achieve this? Definitely yoga has helped me achieve this. And the kind of yoga that I said, it's not the, just the asana pranayama. That also helps because unless your body is taken care of, your mind cannot be worked with. Like if you say you have a frozen shoulder, your shoulder will constantly be taking the attention. Your mind will not be able to do anything better. 
So of course, body is essential. Asana pranayama is essential. But going uh, deeper, uh, sitting with the questions, you know, trying to not run away from our sufferings or the difficult questions, to stay with them and uh, see what comes out, uh, and then break it into smaller chunks of baby steps. You know, cold turkey. We can't change things. That will always exhaust and cause burnouts. That's what I've seen. So uh, start from wherever you are. That's what always we do in yoga. And Deshika Chaudhary always said, start from wherever you are. That's the point. And then see what you want to do, and take small steps towards it. Even if you don't know the whole path, doesn't matter. If you know the what, what is the next step that you need to do, do it with conviction and complete trust, and the faith in that step. And the next step will automatically come forward for you if you do it with complete trust and uh, faith. and uh, like how i also draw a lot of inspiration from ramana maharshi and tiknathan they are my spiritual masters so like how tiknathan always says can i do everything that i do every day mindfully maybe not everything can i sit eat mindfully without looking at the television looking at my phone talking can i at least eat one meal mindfully completely within silently or do something like i'm cooking or i'm walking or i'm doing my dishes or doing my laundry whatever can i do with complete attention without not thinking anything else you know such small mindfulness practices every day build up towards a b- bigger and greater practice thank you thank you kokilat yeah yeah hi uh, la aarti here Yeah. Yeah. So just uh, Arti, like just for the participants, uh, uh, there is a Mentimeter link that Uma has shared. Basically, uh, it is just to collect the <clears throat> the qualities that you have taken from Kokila session. What qualities have uh, emerged from this session for you? So it would be nice if you can just uh, enter. So, Already, yeah, Uma has again shared the link. Yeah. Later on, we'll circle and share it back with you, Kokila. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, I am. I'm just curious now. Curious <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. Uh, thank you so much, Kokila, for joining us. It was uh. for me personally it was so inspiring to listen to you because uh, i know you and i know you're a mother of two boys and you know you're living a normal day to day and yet you are able to bring so much depth a profound you know depth to it and uh, able to look at small things with so much of detailing and depth it's really it's it's very very inspiring you know i think my biggest takeaway is you know seeing parenting as romancing with your darker side i mean it was one of the most <laughs> thing you know um and also like you know you talked about the um, you know looking at yourself from a space of neutrality is a start of healing process so uh, beautiful uh, you know uh, insights that you have shared um and so many other things i mean these are the two insights that i really deeply resonated and wish to hold it within me for as long as possible as sumati ma'am had you know talked about i'm going to write it somewhere so that it you no know, it keeps hitting me and you know i'm able to sustain it through thank you so much i mean deep gratitude for uh, you know sharing your thing and uh, and of course your art is uh, it literally transcends one to the other realm so thank you so much thank you so much kokila thank you thank you arti for your kind words and thank you for this opportunity okay. thank you and we'll uh, you know join back for the next speaker yeah thank you everyone thank you everyone for this thank you uh, thank you for what